There's a new Lord of the Rings movie coming out. Peter Jackson and Andy Serres have signed on. Um, it is based, again, with the film rights, not the Cimmerillion book rights. Uh, it takes place in a similar timeline to the original trilogy. And I've got some feelings about it. Um, first and foremost, I'm excited about the idea of new Lord of the Rings movies being produced because um, I just really enjoy um, uh, Tolkien's work. I really, really uh, like love the original ones a lot. Um, the Hobbit movies had good parts too. Um, and uh, I'm optimistic about um, potentially seeing some good movies down the line from the IP. Um, I, I understand it's important to like respect the author's original work, but I am, I, I'm still a little excited to see some stories coming from, um, an IP that I enjoy a lot. Um, and how they're going to be handled is up for debate, obviously, but, um, I, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm trying to stay... I'm trying to stay a little optimistic and uh, something I'm going to try to do is to treat them as if they're, they're all their own thing and, um, and try not to, um, try not to put too much like stress on, um, on how it's going to be, uh, like if it's going to be any good, um, you know, will it <laughs> shrimp on the floor, you know, uh, are they going to do something outside of the realm? Possibly. Um, ha did they learn any lesson from the Rings of Power? Hopefully. Um, but, uh, but I guess like my, my first thought, um, okay. Um, let me say this. When I first heard about it, I didn't know what the movie was called and I do, and I'm going to get into the very specifics of that movie uh, in just a second. But let, let me just have like a little bit to enjoy the potential first before I crush my <laughs> before I crush my own excitement by saying what the movie's actually gonna be. Um, you know, skip ahead if you're curious. But um so I really liked um what Peter Jackson was able to do, uh, especially with the first movie. The level of care, um, the idea that he like when he was building the Shire set during pre-production, he actually planted plants. So the, you know, the little town was like this living, breathing thing. Uh, practical effects can really like make a movie feel uh, transformative in a way that um, badly done CGI just can't. And uh, it was a real shame uh, with the Hobbit movies that, uh, he lost some of that because the Hobbit movies were more heavily reliant on uh, CGI than the Lord of the Rings movies were. And um, I'm really curious uh, what way it's going to go with that. Like, are we going to, are we going to get a return to like what made Peter Jackson stand out as a uh, film creator, uh, director, producer? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. He wears a lot of hats in the production and I, I think having that level of creative control had something to do with his success. Um, Peter Jackson grew up as a, a fan of Ray Harryhausen, who was a was like known for his practical effects. He um, would make little scale models, which were adorable, uh, for his monster movies in his basement, and he would meticulously film them frame by frame. And uh, if you go back and watch them. Like they're, you know, they're old enough that Peter Jackson grew up watching them. But um, if you go back and watch them, they still hold up. Um, you know, it's obviously fake, but the care that was put into them um, is still worth enjoying. And uh, I think that inspiration really shined through with um, with the little details that kind of sold it, you know, like um, having so much armor for the extras having having actual extras instead of just adding in that that like uncanny cgi crowd i mean you have to, to at a certain point for scale but the fact that they did have so many actual extras on the set um i think mattered a lot with the success of the movies um you know the the actors being willing 
to do a lot of the stunts um, looked considerably better than, you know, Legolas <laughs> sliding down things, right? Um, you know, there it kind of, there were times where, where there were like good moments and there were times where <laughs> I wish it could have gone better. You know, there's, there are, they're really great movies. I'm just saying like, even within the great movies, there's, there's like moments where you kind of wish they hadn't done that. So, um, you know, I, I can, I can say, you know, as a whole, they're really good and enjoy them. And, uh, you know, uh, there was some changes from the books, but I still feel like they're, they're pretty decent interpretations and like as a complete standalone thing, they're masterpieces, you know, <laughs> like, so I'm not, you know, I'm not going to, um, automatically assume, uh, that they're going to be good or bad based on, uh, Peter Jackson's involvement. Um, he's definitely a person that cares a lot about, uh, the IP and, he is a person that has successfully, in many ways, brought it to life several times over. So it's it's a good thing for him to be involved. Um, I just uh, I hope that that there's some like a B team maybe, you know, some um, some new voices to um, to be there if a voice of re reason could be needed, if a second opinion could be valid. Not to the point that they kind of take over things, but I just. Um, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> maybe it was ambition, maybe it was budget, like who knows why he made the decisions that he did. Um, you know, there was a lot of choices in the Hobbit movies that not everybody likes. Um, you know, it, like the idea that, that like a simple children's book was turned into a trilogy just because the original <laughs> three book trilogy was a trilogy, um, is something that, you know, I didn't necessarily care for and th that it was broken into three movies and still rushed in parts was peculiar. So I'm cautiously optimistic and a little bit pessimistic because, you know, um, with the Star Wars movies, I was excited to get more of uh, the Star Wars universe because uh, I'm, I really like the expanded lore. I've, I really liked Bioware's takes on, on uh, the universe. I really like some of the uh, the expanded uh, stories from it. Um, I I feel like, you know, uh, some of those IPs, uh, of course, the story matters first and foremost, but some of the, the world building uh, that they were able to do can really set the stage to tell a lot of great stories. So I'm not the kind of person that says you have to throw everything away when you're done telling a single story if you've put a lot of work into creating a world but at the same time um does anybody want to watch a 17 part mini series about like frodo's years in the shire between you know keeping the ring secret and safe and actually leaving with it i don't i don't think we need that i mean like in fairness i'd probably have that on like almost on repeat just to have like some ambient noise because you know like who wouldn't want to mentally escape to like a simple life of the shire uh sometimes but would that make a compelling movie or show i don't think so so <laughs> that kind of transitions me into the working title of the movie is um it's a movie about golem why why is there a movie about golem i uh, it, you know, if he's a character that you enjoy, I can understand why you would enjoy him, but I don't feel like I need to know more about him as a character. I liked that he was con conflicted and tormented and that like he was as much, you know, a victim as a villain. Like I, you know, there's some interesting stuff about him, but does it need further exploring? I mean, like Anthony Serious or Andy Serious, I'm so sorry, sorry, um, is a very talented actor. And uh, it's really nice for him to have creative control coming on in more of a, uh, what, director capacity uh, for this one. Uh, that's, a, that's a really uh, cool step. Um, he definitely understands a lot about filmmaking and he can bring a lot to the table. But did we need more Golem? <laughs> like, just did we need more of that character? I don't think so. Will the movie be more successful than the game? Like, Golem <laughs> that came out last year? 
probably, but that's such a low bar, you know? Um, so yeah, I'm not that excited about a Golem movie. Um, I'm looking more off into the future, assuming this one doesn't financially fail because again, how many people want to see a Golem movie? Um, you know, I mean, I definitely want to see more, more Lord of the Rings, but, um, but yeah, of the, of the characters to, to give more time to, that's not really, you know, that's not my first pick. Um, I remember a couple of years back, but I can't find any new information about it. Um, there was, um, a movie in the works about, uh, Baron and Lothwin, um, which are, uh, it's a, um, it's a romantic story, but it's not like, <laughs> it's, um, romance, it, you know, not, it's not like, um, it's not a Hollywood romance, so it's not like sexualized, it's like an actual romance, um, between two characters, um, from the Cimmerillion, but I, I don't know whatever happened with that. Um, I remember thinking that was the Lord of the Rings movie that we were going to get. So, um, I don't know what's happened. I don't know, um... <laughs> I don't know what lessons, if any, they've learned from Rings of Power because some of the people that have worked on it are coming back on to work on the movies, um, which, um, um, I, I didn't like the show. I, um, it's probably just that it was set in the time period of the Cimmerillion without having the book rights, but everything was a little bit off and, uh, to me, and this isn't an indictment of the actors themselves. It's more of the overall um, effect of everything. It felt like community theater in an opera house. Like the show had such a big budget. They would they would have these, you know, they'd have elaborate sets or they'd have like elaborate CGI and they had, you know, these characters that like, you know, uh, in, in, <laughs> in, in these outfits or like they would have, you know, uh, just different stuff. But as far as what was happening, it felt like they were improving almost at times. Um, you know, just what was any of it. Um, I just, I had a lot of, I, I took a lot of issues with it, um, which is why I, I, I don't, you know, I don't mention it. It wasn't all bad. Um, there was definitely some parts of it I liked and I could probably go part by part, but um, that's not really... That's not really about, you know, the future movies. It's about something that's uh, that's already sitting there. So maybe now it's not the time. But um but yeah, I'm I'm still cautiously optimistic about it because again, I um I really enjoy the IP and I am interested to see more from it. Um I don't I don't know. Um you could say that like we should be completely writing new stories and I totally agree but at the same time you know Tolkien put decades of work into building the world and um just because he's already told like one great story within it two really um doesn't mean that there's not other stories that could be told um it's okay if you disagree with me on this point it's just sort of where I feel about it uh, there's just, there's not a lot of Tolkien's that come around. There's not a lot of language scholars. There's not a lot of, um, people who, um, you know, take the time to, to, to build languages. People take the time to have histories and, uh, and mythologies and so much unseen really that's built into making the world believable that I completely see the value in using the setting to tell new stories or to expand upon the characters that already exist in it with respect, with um, respect for the source material, with um, understanding of the characters, understanding with the context of what we know about them, how they should behave. Um, and if done right, then it's a really great story and it had a really solid start. And if done badly, then what is it they're paying for when they get the rights? If it's not going to um, respect the source material, if it's not going to benefit from being placed in the world. I mean, it's, 
uh, you know, I understand a lot of people have brand loyalty or IP loyalty where, you know, myself included, like I'll end up seeing a, a movie just because it's, um, it's, you know, done by a director I like or part of a franchise that I've liked other things from, or, you know, I'm willing to give it a chance just because like in this case, just because it's more, uh, <laughs> It's more from the world, uh, from Middle Earth. It's more from Tolkien, um, source material. Um, you know, it's it's more Peter Jackson with a budget, and I I enjoy his filmmaking. Um, there's a you know, the parts I in, in, enjoy about it, um, like you know, are, are are what make made him special. Uh, and uh, the the CGI is, I'm. I'm not a fan of of over the top CGI, especially in such a a grounded low fantasy story. So I don't want to see a lot more a lot of it personally. Like I, <laughs> but I mean I, I don't know that's me. Uh, so. So yeah, this is sort of just my first thoughts from hearing about it. Uh, what do you think about it? Are you excited? Um like a hard pass on a golem movie or do you actually like the golem character are you more excited like i am for like the potential movies down the line or are you saying like you know they like um let let the ip rest in in peace if this is what they're going to do with it like i don't know um i'm i'm of several minds on it myself so i would really like to uh to see what other people are thinking about it um take care